Well, thank you. Thank you uh, very much to GNA, too. What a great event. Who would have thought only eight months after we met here for the first time after COVID that the 5,000 I think we had in attendance last meeting in August, September is now 8,000. So great job to GNA and appreciate you setting this up. Uh, my name is Eric Bippus. I'm Senior Vice President of Hexagon Agility. On stage, I have with me Todd Sloan, our Executive Vice President of Hexagon Puris, and Dr. Matthias Rebernick from Cryo Shelter in Austria that we're going to talk more about. What I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time talking about Hexagon Composites, the group, and why we're here today, and we're excited to make this announcement. So taking a look at the group of businesses of Hexagon Composites, we have two businesses that are on the right and left. You see Hexagon Agility and Hexagon Purus, very much focused on the automotive heavy-duty transport space. We also have two businesses, one of them represented here, Hexagon Digital Wave. We have some information in the back of the booth here that we can give you on that. That's around modal acoustic testing, and then Hexagon Regasco that is focused on LPG cylinders. But when we stick with the heavy duty transport sector and why we're here, we look at Hexagon Agility, which is our low emission G mobility business, very much focused on back of cab systems like you see here on this Frito truck, side mount systems, LPG, fuel systems, and energy storage around natural gas. Hexagon Purus, the Todd's from, focuses on zero emission technology, which is primarily around BEV solutions, as well as hydrogen solutions. Together, those two businesses over the last decade have more than 70,000 alt fuel vehicles on the road globally, whether it be in transport, class A truck, medium duty, and light duty transport. We take a look at the segments that we operate in today, especially in the, in the vehicle sector. We take our, our view to the marketplace, and when we talk to fleets and we talk to customers, is very much an energy agnostic view. So we don't believe that there's one solution for today or one solution for tomorrow. We believe that this is a journey to a zero emission future, and the journey has already started. Some of the people have gotten on the ship, some of them are late to the party, and some have already embraced it well. And our technology today is focused around renewable natural gas, and natural gas and agility, and as I said, hydrogen and, and EV solutions on the purer side. And the various segments that we operate in are heavy-duty truck, medium-duty truck and transport, transit bus and coach, both in Europe and in North America, refuse space, which has really adopted well, an all-fuel strategy, and then an emerging business that's even busier than it has been in the past, especially with renewable natural gas taking off, is our mobile pipeline business, getting stranded gas to a pipeline or processing center. So when we focus on our portfolio and really that, that journey that the fleet goes on, regardless of what segment they're in, if they want to pursue an alt fuel strategy, today when we look at the Hexagon Group, we have solutions in compressed natural gas and RNG, type four composite cylinders, we have pure BEV solutions, we have hydrogen solutions with, through a, a fuel cell and BEV drivetrain. Where we have a hole is around cryogenic storage. So when you look at some of the markets around the world, especially in the European market where you have, you don't have the back of cab space that you see in the truck in the booth here, we have to go along the frame rails. You need a very high density of energy and that limits your frame rail space. So that tends towards liquid solutions. So we're very excited to announce our partnership and our investment in Crow Shelter that Matthias will come and talk to you more about. And that allows us to fill out our portfolio. So prior to this acquisition and investment in this business, we did not have a complete solution. Now, if you go to all the booths here at the show and take a look at all of the companies that are providing energy storage solutions, no company other than the Hexagon Group has more complete solutions than what we have today whether it be 200 bar, up to 700 bar, type four storage, natural gas and hydrogen, or cryogenically stored fuel as well. Once again, liquid nat natural gas and hydrogen. So when we look at the business and we look at cryo shelter, there's two pieces of the business that we're gonna focus on, and that is the LNG business, very much for a European focus, but also applicable here for the North American market. That'll live within agility, so liquid natural gas. Todd's gonna to come up to you from the Pierce side and talk to you about LH2, and that's what we'll focus on in the future under the Pierce brand. So with that, I'll bring up Todd Sloan. All right. Thank you, Eric. Okay, um, Hexagon Pierce focuses on both 
fuel cell electric and battery electric vehicle. We build vehicles, we support with battery systems and hydrogen systems. On this chart, you can see in the lower left corner, the dark green area is really where BEV makes a lot of sense. It, it's the graph on the x-axis is range, on the y-axis is payload, and when you have light loads and short mileage, it does make a lot of sense to do a BEV application. Um, you can see that kind of big circle in the middle. This is where we focus our business is in medium and heavy duty commercial truck. That circle spans BEV, the lighter green, which is hydrogen, and the blue area, which is liquid hydrogen. Up to this point, we really didn't have a solution once you get beyond 600 miles of zero emission. So now with the investment in cryo shelter, we'll be able to address that big blue market and get these trucks up and over a thousand miles of range. So this is showing uh, a fuel cell electric truck. We're building a number of these trucks right now at Hexagon Purus. And a fuel cell electric truck is a range extended battery electric truck. Every fuel cell truck has underneath it a battery electric platform. The truck I'm sitting on here today has one of these battery packs on it and our new version of this will be 330 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And to put that in perspective, that amount of energy will allow you to drive around 100 miles of range, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than that. <clears throat> the hydrogen compressed system, a version of which looks like that blue cabinet on this Frito-Lay truck, this is CNG, but we're making a hydrogen version of this as well, will store 73 kilograms of hydrogen, and that truck will be able to go up and over 500 miles all zero emission. And then with the cryo shelter technology, with liquid storage, we'll be able to get up to 180 kilograms of hydrogen storage. And if you do the math and convert that amount of energy to what a battery electric vehicle would need, that's up to three megawatts of energy on board a vehicle, which would take 20, 30,000 pounds of weight and pretty much your entire vehicle to store that much battery content. So liquid hydrogen is a big part of our portfolio. That's what missing and super excited about this investment. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Okay, with that, uh, if we could do a big unveil here, come on over. We've been waiting for this. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Matthias Rebernick. So I've gotten to know him over the last couple of years as we've gone on this journey to, uh, to invest in each other. And uh, it's been a great experience. We're super excited to have him part of the team, have his product and portfolio part of the team. Just to give you a little background about Matthias, he, he's always been a car guy, been in the all fuel space, uh, a, t a bit of a tinkerer, but a little fun fact I did find out about him this week was he was involved in installation of the first LH2 filling station in the country of Austria. So pretty, pretty excited to have him on the team. And with that, I'll bring you to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my name is Matthias Rebanik. I'm the founder of Cryo Shelter. We are a core team of 15 people with a network of highly specialized development partners and suppliers located in Austria in the heart of Europe. Cryo shelter, cryo shelter was triggered by BMW's liquid hydrogen tank project, uh, in which I participated as a PhD student. And after finishing, I, um, st I founded cryo shelter and I started working on a very specific subcomponent of cryotank system, but just to find out that it requires a complete redesign of cryogenic tank systems to make them truly fit for automotive applications, especially for heavy duty trucks. And this is what we have today. We have created an LNG tank system for long haul trucks. It's uh, certified, it's on the road, it's being field tested by European OEMs and we have a pilot production line installed in Austria. And we already have started work to, um, to build on the same technology platform to build a solution for liquid hydrogen for long-haul trucks. 
So two sentences about cryogenic storage. Basically, it stores gaseous fuels at temperatures low enough to turn them into liquid. And that increases the density by a factor of 800, 600 to 800, uh, depending on the fuel. So that means a lot of fuel can be stored in a very small space, which is useful for long-haul applications, especially useful for European long-haul trucks because they have much stricter uh, space limitations. And the second thing is, there is no active cooling. It, it takes an insulation system to keep the fuel cold for meaningful periods. And what we have done basically is we have rearranged and redesigned the thermal insulation shell to make it much thinner. And thereby, we added 20 up to 30% of additional fuel capacity in the same space. And also, even though it's thinner, we made it more effective. So that means less heat enters the cold fuel and it stays cold longer. And so long actually that we eliminated the use it or lose it anxiety of first generation or previous generation cryotank systems. On top, we added, um, we added an electronic fuel condition management. That means we keep the pressure and the temperature always in the sweet spot to supply just enough fuel to the engine or fuel cell, but at the same time to get the maximum uh, autonomy time of it. So that optimizes the performance um, of a single tank, but especially it gives us the opportunity to couple electronically link multiple tanks on a vehicle. And all of that is purely focused on essentially minimizing the total cost of ownership for the fleets, because that's what the, what the transport industry is about, I believe. And we managed, and all of this builds on the, on the cryo-shelter technology, technology platform, which basically um, starts, starts with safety and is designed to always give the maximum fuel capacity in any given space while still providing enough um, insulation performance to eliminate the use it or, or use it anxiety. It's designed for production. That means we can apply automotive uh, production processes that are repeatable to assure quality at competitive cost. And on top, we've created a modular system. So that means we can now build tanks to specifications of the fleets so that it fits exactly the purpose of each truck. And now, building on the same technology platform, like I pointed out, we're working on liquid hydrogen solutions. Uh, liquid, hydrogen, liquid hydrogen is much, it's even colder and uh, less dense fuel, and it's much more challenging to achieve the same strong value proposition for the fleets, but we are adding uh, new technology components and features and software to make that happen and again to minimize the total cost of ownership. And um, with this, I'm at the end. I'm very excited about the partnership with Hexagon and looking forward to bringing this globally to market together with Hexagon. Thank you, Dr. Matias. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate it. Uh, at this point, we'd like to open up for any questions that you may have in the audience. We do have a microphone. Yep. So, when is your target launch? Where's the production facility, and what target markets are you looking at? Yeah, great question. So from an LNG perspective, certainly our target market is the European market. We're already working with OEMs in that market space. The, the production would come out of Austria initially, and then we'd assess thereafter. However, we do have pilot programs that we'll do in the North American market as well. We have uh, customers identified in this market. You want to mention hydrogen as well? Yeah, on, on the hydrogen project, we're going into development now. M Matthias has been working on the technology for about a year. Uh, B samples in 2024 with production 2025. So think of that cryogenic hydrogen kind of go live 25. 
Yeah, just a, a comment. It's a good point, Todd. You know, there's a lot of synergies between LNG and LH2 production, so we certainly look to piggyback on that from both a commercialization, but also an industrialization strategy as well. We have a question here. Yep. Um, looking at the LNG and the hydrogen, is there a significant difference in terms of materials and how that's all packaged on there between the two fuels? Uh, in terms of materials, there is yeah different gra grades of stainless steel basically, but there is large similarities between the two, and we can add just as we can you know build the specification in the length. We also have different components uh, and modules to adjust the, the insulation quality. So for hydrogen, we would just put more of these solutions in there because it it requires uh, a better insulation system. Okay, thank you. Thank you.